The marine shipping sector is one of the hardest parts of the economy to decarbonize. It emits roughly the same amount of carbon as all U.S. passenger vehicles combined. As we face growing challenges due to climate change, a critical question is, can a global industry, along with its significant infrastructure, completely eliminate the 1 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide it emits every year? Transforming the sector to zero carbon emissions by 2050 entails significant technical, financial, and regulatory challenges. However, the Clean Air Task Force believes the shipping industry's carbon emissions can be eliminated by replacing heavy fuel oil and marine diesel with zero carbon fuels such as ammonia. To be successful, regulation, investment, and policy changes at the national and international level will be required. In addition, we must take concerted action to address the main economic concerns of four key parts of the industry. For example, port operators focus mainly on capital expenditures, the cost of investing in new fuel storage and delivery infrastructure while cargo owners are concerned with operational expenditures that keep the cost of each trip to a minimum. Our recommended strategy centers on a series of key actions. First, to jumpstart the transition to ammonia, countries must invest in the development of hydrogen, the key ingredient in ammonia production, while also upgrading port infrastructure and or subsidizing the cost of zero carbon fuels. Cargo owners can send a clear demand signal to carriers and meet their publicly announced environmental commitments by paying for zero carbon shipping initially on a portion of their cargo. Countries must pressure international bodies such as the International Maritime Organization to require a 100% reduction in emissions by 2050. Market-based emission reduction mechanisms like Europe's emission trading system need to expand to include the maritime sector. Consensus on the use of hydrogen-based fuels, including ammonia, is essential and will give ship owners and port operators confidence to make long-term capital investments. Investment in the development of key production technologies like electrolyzers and fuel cells will lower the cost of carbon-free shipping over time. If we pursue these coordinated interventions, we can transform marine shipping between now and 2050. Let's paint a picture of what the resulting changes could look like. In the 2020s, ammonia emerges as the optimal fuel for fully decarbonizing long-distance shipping. National and regional governments invest in fuel production and retrofit port infrastructure. Several ports are ready to support maiden voyages. Engine manufacturers develop internal combustion engines that run on ammonia, and ship owners retrofit existing vessels or build zero carbon ships. Fuel producers ramp up production as forward-thinking cargo owners pay a premium for shipping cargo on zero carbon vessels. In the 2030s, key countries and regions continue to invest in fueling and port infrastructure so that more and more of the world's busiest ports can service zero carbon ships. More ships are retrofitted with engines that can burn ammonia, and new ammonia-capable ships replace aging vessels. Cargo owners commit a higher percentage of their cargo to ammonia-fueled ships. Ammonia prices come down quickly as increasing production enables process improvements. In the 2040s, nearly all major ports can service ammonia-fueled ships, and an even higher percentage of the fleet is ammonia-capable and can service more trade routes. More cargo owners commit a higher portion of their cargo to those vessels. New technologies, such as fuel cells, improve efficiency and reduce shipping operating costs, and breakthroughs in electrolysis make zero-carbon fuels more price competitive. By 2050, virtually every port sells zero-carbon fuel, and nearly the entire fleet is running carbon-free. With concerted action and sufficient investment, we can achieve the goal of zero-carbon emissions in the marine shipping sector by 2050.